I heard you on the radio uh, being interviewed a while back talking about uh, it's DMT, is that the... That is. <laughs> and um, that got me really interested. And uh, you, you, you said that it was basically unavailable. From me. <laughs> Well, is that your question? No. <laughs> well, close, close. Pardon me? No, I, I was really wondering, um, yeah, I, I had interpreted that you had said it was pretty much unavailable, period, and I was wondering if, if in fact, it was available, and um, if not, I mean, that just sort of renewed my interest in psychedelics, um, which now you think is the second best choice? Well, first let me say, because it's an... And nice I'd like to hear maybe just a little more about, um, about DMT. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, first thing let me say, which is a piece of practical advice, um, the psychedelic community is, is cleverly invisible. Because our choices in gender expression, fashion, so forth and so on, have by crypto osmosis come to dominate the values of the culture, we can no longer tell ourselves from, from straight people. <laughs> so uh, the only opportunity where we really come out of the woodwork is a thing like this. And, but then of course there's a tendency to fall into old think and everybody focus on the alpha male spielmeister at the front of the room. Uh, so let me point out to you, I'm leaving, I'm going home to Hawaii tomorrow morning, but this is your community. This is your community. And whatever it is that you think you need, there are a dozen people in this room who can help you out. <laughs> and I am not one of them. <laughs> because I have a different assignment. But look around, and, and of course, be careful. Uh, but after all, this is about consciousness, right? I mean, if you're not conscious enough to uh, uh, conduct that social transaction without flubbing it up, that's probably God's way of telling you you shouldn't be proceeding toward high doses anyway. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, you wanted me to say more about it. The black and red poncho. <laughs> the man in the black and red poncho. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, in a way, it's impossible to talk about DMT, but on the other hand, it's fun to try to talk about it because <laughs> it, pushes, it pushes the horse of language into a lather. <laughs> Basically, when you smoke DMT, what happens is pure confoundment. And, you know, I'm trying to speak generally here in the sense that different people are confounded by different things. So, of course, it addresses you personally. Your, your level and tolerance for confoundment is a very uh, personal thing. Uh, people have asked me about DMT, is it dangerous? And the real answer is only if you fear death by astonishment. <laughs> you know, and you deliver that line and then people laugh except the people who've done DMT don't laugh. <laughs> because they understand, you know, death by astonishment is no remote possibility. Uh, death by astonishment is right there. Uh, you know, when was the last time you were astonished? Uh, it's, unless I smoke DMT, it doesn't happen to me. Amazed occasionally. Astonish? Never. Astonishment is when your jaw hangs for a long time, you know? 
and DMT is simply confounding. Now, how could something be that confounding? I mean, you can imagine taking a drug and realizing that you should treat your partner better or realizing that God really exists or realizing that you should exercise more or <laughs> realizing that the planet is an organized intelligence. But, but how could something be as confounding as DMT is? Uh, well, I think the answer to that, and it took me a while to get to this, is that the reason it's so confounding is because it, its, its impact is on the, the language forming capacity itself. So the reason it's so confounding is because the thing which is trying to look at the DMT is, is infected by it, it, by it, by the process of inspection. So DMT does not provide an experience which you analyze. Nothing so tidy goes on. The, the, the syntactical machinery of description undergoes some kind of hyperdimensional inflation instantly. And, and then, you know, you, you, you cannot tell yourself what it is that you understand. In other words, what DMT does can't be downloaded into as low dimensional a language as English. And so you're, you're like, I remember a B movie I saw when I was a kid and it was set somewhere in Mexico and there was a big swamp and there was a dinosaur in the swamp and at one point this, uh, this campesino comes, who encounters the dinosaur comes rushing out of the swamp and the Patron of the ranch is there and this terrified guy is there in the serape and he can only point to the forest and sort of make a croaking sound and uh, and, and and that's what English allows you to do uh, with the experience of DMT you just come down a sputtering mess if it if it works you just come down saying you know my God, you know, it's not what I thought it was. You know, this is after you've done it 20 times. You know, it's not what I thought it was. It's not what I can think it is. It, 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 it's something, and I, to me, it's a miracle because my intellectual arrow and how I brought myself up in terms of all these things was I am a rationalist. And I am interesting, interested in testing and verifying and proceeding to define truth by non-exotic means. In other words, no archangels, no none of that. Uh, and and as I as I matured intellectually, I began to eliminate mystery from the world. You know, I look into some spiritual discipline conclude, no, that's a bunch of crap. I'd go to some teacher, conclude, no, this guy is a weasel. I, I tested, I, I sought the weird, but with an attitude of critical skepticism. And I assumed blithely that with this flashlight, I would soon prove there were no elves in, out there in the darkness. Turns out, no, no, this is the way to proceed because stuff which is malarkey will be exposed as malarkey instantly. You know, you just go to the guru and say, what can I, what can you show me? And if the guy wants you to sweep up around the ashram for a dozen years or so, you say, no, I'm out of here. Uh, but when you get to DMT, it delivers, it delivers. It is as strange as anything can be, as anything can be. It is, you know, it is not only stranger than you suppose as you sit here, it is stranger than you can suppose. And what makes me wild about this is 
we're not talking about something that you have to go 500 miles up a jungle river and live with primitive people and study techniques for 30 years and control. We're talking about something which if I had a pipe loaded with it in my hand, each one of you would be 30 seconds away from what I'm talking about. Well, you know, you've tripped and yeah, you lived in Paris and you went to Trebizond and all these things, but nothing like this ever descended. But it's not, it's not, it, it's so near, you know, it's not attained by practicing tantric techniques or building up mon it's none of that it's just near very near one toke away is this absolutely reality dissolving category reconstructing mind-boggling possibility and I feel like this is a truth that has to be told I'm like the campesino running out of the swamp and saying, you know, over here, you know, the orange thing, uh, do, do that.